continuing the series on Python and physics. And in, in the past two, was it two videos? Two videos, I've, I've done the mass on a spring. And it turns out it's super important. And I'm gonna tell you why. I mean, when we're doing numerical stuff, things like springs are crazy good. This is not a spring. This is a mass on a string. Uh, it's in pretty much every, not every, but pretty much every introductory physics textbook. They say, hey, look, a mass on a string swinging back and forth, it's a pendulum, it's kind of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal for a lot of reasons, but it's not an easy problem. It's introduced as, oh, this is another example of simple harmonic motion. If, if, if the angle is small enough, then it oscillates back and forth, and it has a period, the time for one complete oscillation, 2 pi times the square root of L over G, where L is the length of the string. G is the magnitude of the gravitational field. Uh, and then you can model it this way as a, as a harmonic uh, solution of sines and cosines. But how do you solve that problem? It's not easy. Okay, You may think it's easy, but it's not easy. So if, if I want to do this in terms of forces, what forces are acting on the mass? It starts from rest at this angle right here. I have the downward gravitational force. I'll put that as mg. And G, I have the upwards tension, T. So if I want to, I could say F net equals uh, T, the vector, plus mg. And then let's, just, let's use Newton's second law. Let's say that's equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, everyone's happy, right? No, I'm not happy. Because now I don't want to deal with that. What if I want to deal with that in two scalar equations? So if I call this the X and the y direction that I have. Okay, now, if that's the case, what's my y forces? Well, I, I, I actually can find uh, the magnitude, the component of the tension in the y direction. So this angle theta, so in F net y, net y, is gonna be equal to T sine theta minus mg equals what? Does it equal zero? No, it doesn't. It equals m a y. Because if, if this was zero, when I let go, the vertical velocity is zero, the vertical velocity would stay zero, but it doesn't. Look, it starts moving down, right? So it doesn't, it's not zero. Okay, now if I do the same thing for the x direction, f net x equals, uh, it's gonna be negative t, actually this is cosine. It doesn't really matter. Sine theta equals m a x. So the x acceleration is not zero. If it starts from rest and a x and a y are zero, then a v x and v y stay zero. But that's not the case because it starts moving. So here I don't know the tension. I know g, but I don't know a and I don't know y. So really, if this is this is, this is not really, you can't solve this problem with normal new, Newtonian mechanics. And it's because tension is a difficult force to deal with. Tension is actually a force of constraint. So what does that mean? This means that the tension is going to apply whatever force it needs to this to make this distant from here to here not be greater than L. Okay, uh, uh, it's not going to have a negative force because tensions can't push, but it's going to prevent this from going that way. So it's going to do whatever it needs to do. <clears throat> so there's no equation for T. This is a period. That's not T. There's no equation for the tension. There's an equation for the gravitational force, and I can calculate the gravitational force at each instant in time, but I can't calculate the tension at each instant in time unless I do a trick. You can calculate it, right? I can say, Oh, well, I know this is moving in a circle, and I know the velocity. I can calculate that, but I'm not going to do that. The important thing is that this is a complicated equation to solve. I'm going to solve this equation in polar coordinates in a later video as an example of how to solve differential equations. But I'm trying to point out that this is not a trivial problem, and it probably shouldn't even be in introductory books. I, it could be a great lab. You could just experimentally say, oh, what happens is I change the length and I, can I model that? That's fine. But trying to get to this equation uh, or even this equation, it's just brr out there. Okay, well, it turns out that there are forces of constraint apply whatever force they need for something to be uh, 
constrained, duh. Uh, another example of a force of constraint is this. A block on an incline, right? The, the normal force pushes this way and it has a magnitude to prevent that from going through, but you don't have an equation for the normal force. We can derive it based on the constraint, but we don't have an equation directly. The gravitational force we do, the spring force we do, we do have an equation for the spring force. We can calculate the spring force at every instant. And in the previous video, you saw that uh, if I have this as a mass with a spring, and I pull it to the side, it behaves kind of like a pendulum. Not exactly, because it's, it's shook up and down. But what if I use a spring instead of a string, can I get this equation? And that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to Python. Now, I'm gonna use my previous code. Okay, so I'm not gonna recalculate everything. Actually, let's, let's copy this so that I don't mess everything up. So this is gonna be spring pendulum. Okay, and let's run it just to make sure things are working. I always like to run things to make sure. Okay, so in this case, it doesn't look like a pendulum. Let's see if we can make this look like a pendulum. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to start, I'm gonna number one, dramatically increase the spring constant. Number two, I'm gonna define the tilt angle. Okay. So here I have a spring constant of 10. Let's try something like 500, not 50, 500. Uh, L zero is fine, G the mass. Now here, let's go up here and define an angle. Theta equals 10 times pi divided by 180. So that's 10 degrees. In my head, I remember 15 degrees was the, uh, the, the proper angle for a pendulum. Uh, let's increase this to uh, one five. I think that's fine. So down here, I'm going to start the position uh, the top dot pos minus this vector from uh, let's say plus l zero times vector. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of I should draw this, but if I think about this tilted off to the angle, uh, it's going x component's going to be negative l zero sine theta. So I already have the l zero, so it's just going to be negative sine theta. And then the y component is going to be negative cosine theta. And the z component is going to be zero. Okay, so that's that. Now, I'm also going to start this with zero momentum. And let's just, that's it. Let's just see, let's just see what happens. I mean, that looks kind of silly, but it looks like a pendulum too. It's a shaky pendulum. Well, let's see if we can fix this. What if I even increases more, let's say a thousand, point five, a thousand point five, not a thousand, a thousand point five. I mean, still shaking a little bit, but you know, we can fix this and I'm not going to right now, uh, but it is possible to fix that. I will tell you that. Um, let's just one way, to, the one way to fix things is to make, uh, go to extremes, 5,000, and I'm actually gonna decrease the time step too, to zero, and then I'm gonna increase the time step. So now we're going crazy out of control here. Now that looks pretty nice. That's a pendulum. Okay, it's a pendulum. But is it the same period as what we would expect? So in order to do that, there's several ways. One of the things that I like to stress in these lessons is that the, it's important to do it the way that makes the sense to you. It, there, are, there are sophisticated and elegant ways to solve these kind of problems, but that doesn't mean that that's what you have to do. You need to do the thing that makes sense to you. And so in this case, I want to just plot a graph. I'm just going to do uh, x versus time. I could actually do theta versus time, but I'm going to plot x versus time. So x versus time looks very, you know, I can, I can at least tell when it gets back to where it was. And from that, I can get the period. Let's make that and then we'll print the period. So I'm gonna make a graph, G1 equals graph. I'm gonna make a nice graph. Uh, X title equals uh, X in meters. Y title equals uh, T in seconds. No, this is X and this is T. 
and the width. Let's always put the width over here because it shows a better width. And spell it correctly equals 500. Height equals 250. Uh, now I need a graph. F1 equals G curve. Color equals color dot blue. So um, if you look back through my previous ones, probably like lesson two, maybe it was, maybe lesson three, maybe lesson three or four, I, I go over graphing. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to do graphing as we go on. Now down here, I'm going to uh, add a data point to my graph. F1 dot plot. T. Now, what's my x value? Well, I'm, I'm plotting the position of my mass. So it's actually going to be mass.pos, but that's a vector. I can't plot a vector. So if I, I can plot just the x component of that as dot x. And let's run it. And it looks like it's working. And, and it looks nice, right? It looks like a sine, a cosine, a trig function. Uh, so I can get my period from that. Let's actually decrease this uh, time to just one. Let's do. 1.5 seconds and then down here I'm going to calculate the theoretical oops tt the theoretical period that's what I'm going to call that tt equals uh, 2 times pi times square root of L over G L which I'm calling L0 divided by G which is the magnitude of G I've already have G in there I can't I can't divide by a vector and let's print that out. Print t t theory equals t t seconds. Okay, now let's run that. Okay, so I get a period of 0.77 seconds. Uh, so I can get that from here too, right here. It starts right here, it goes up and back down to 0.77 seconds. That's that's pretty close. Look at that. Okay, 0.78. Fine, whatever. But the period is really close. Um, and, and so this is a problem that we can solve. And the big difference here is that I know the forces. I calculate the gravitational force. I calculate the spring force. I update momentum. That's fine, right? I don't have any forces of constraint, which I have no idea what they are. And so this is why springs are so important. They allow us to model complicated situations using calculated forces instead of forces of constraint. And it's kind of cheating. That's true. Okay. Not really. I mean, it's not cheating. I mean, strings are springs. Uh, if you get an actual mass on a, on a string, it does move up and down. The, the string does stretch. Maybe it's super, 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 super high spring constant, but it does stretch. And I could fix this by making an even higher spring constant and stuff. But, but I'll, let me show you one thing that you couldn't do with your model. What if I start theta up here at 60 degrees? And let's run this for 5.5 seconds. Okay, so now that looks pretty good, right? But the period is gonna be different here because it's not less than 15 degree angle. That other solution is an approximation anyway. And on top of that, let me say that if you solve for the differential equation and get sines and cosines, sine is a numerical calculation, okay? It, you gotta find the number for that somehow. It's not like magically given to you from, you know, just falls out of the sky, you gotta know it. So this is a legitimate thing. And, and that looks legitimately awesome. Look at that. That's cool. Uh, okay. So I think that's it. Um, I'm not sure what the next video is going to be on, but there's going to be another one. I got a lot. There, we're going to use springs more. I'm going to, when we get into rotational motion, springs are super cool and super awesome. Uh, springs are also useful in collisions. So we'll do that too. Okay. Code for this is down below. The playlist for all these videos is down below too. So if you want to go back to the beginning and look through them, I know that I sometimes have trouble finding videos uh, in a series, but it's all there for you. I hope you enjoy this. I'm having fun too.